Coming to you from the Windy City. Welcome to Let's Talk Shop, a podcast about all things cloud and enterprise tech. Listen to insights and guest interviews with IT thought leaders and professionals. Now, here's your host, Elias Kanaser. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Let's Talk Shop. We're going to maintain our tradition. We're back at reInvent 2025, and we're going to have some interesting conversations. My guest today is Ali Maz from Amazon, from AWS. Thank Ali, you. Thank you for making time. Pleasure's all mine. Ali, tell us what you do at AWS first. So I lead the go-to-market for AWS's portfolio of developer services. Simplest and the top of the mind being Kiro, and then Agent Core and Strand, I think. Very cool. So for those that follow the channel, you'll remember last year we had Rory Richardson. And Rory, as I'm sure you know, started off the, the podcast last year by, in so many words, saying, what I'd like to do is build Jarvis from Iron Man. She tickled my fancy. <laughs> so, so I'm going to put you on the spot and say, how far are we from building Jarvis? So when Rory talked about Jarvis, Jarvis was still a chatbot, right? <laughs> if you look at the Marvel's evolutions, Jarvis started as a natural language interface. Okay. And since last year, it has come a long way. Okay. And let me explain how. So from just answering intelligent questions or solving very specific problems. Now, Kiro, with its agent mode and spec-based de de development, mm -hmm. you can actually do some real coding, production-level coding with Kiro. Okay. And it's not just about coding. We actually went one step ahead of Jarvis, and we said, before you get to Jarvis, let's go one step back and talk about planning for Jarvis. Okay. We realized one of the biggest problems in coding assistance world is that the problem is not really coding and downstream. That problem, I think, everybody has I solved. solved. Yep. The real problem, the fun part of the problem, is the planning cycle. Okay. And that's where your product teams, your go-to-market people like me, UX and UI designers and engineers sit together and figure out what the business opportunity is. You guys we don't kill each other when you sit together? <laughs> we used to, okay. but now Kiro is, a, or Jarvis, or Kiro, is a good arbiter. Okay. Right? And so essentially that's where we sit together and that goes well with our DNA of two pizza teams as well, okay. a very startup culture. So we sit together and we focus on what is the business requirement. Normally or internally we call it the PR FAQ and think about that PR FAQ. The next logical step is a requirements document. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, once you feed that, the specs, the requirements, and the task list and design, all of that planning, Kiro takes care of it. Okay. Now, with Kiro, you also have MCP and A2A support. And so now you can actually take all your favorite tools and connect them together along with Kiro. So now we have gotten into the planning and thinking part of Kiro or Jarvis. And also the legs and arms pieces of Jarvis along, as you know, you can connect with MCP. Sure. It still doesn't fly. Well, very soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys made a lot of our announcements mm -hmm. at this year's reInvent. Yeah. If I were to ask you, give me two or three of your favorite announcements around Kiro and some of the other areas that you cover, what would those be? And if you can put them for me in practical terms. Mm -hmm. So, what's the announcement that you like and how, how do you expect enterprises to actually use it? Thank you for asking that question. So, two, actually, I have two favorites. Okay. Um, and for very different reasons. One of this is the Kiro Autonomous Agent we are going to announce. So if you think about it, philosophically, a lot of 2023 to 2025 is an era with what I call the bolt-on AI. In that, it is more about assisting the developer. It's more human-centric, and it's making the idea of a coding assistant is like a, if you're, if a developer is a driver, then this assistant is a GPS. It's about human-centric design and efficiency. But Kiro Autonomous Agent is our first foray into human is still in the loop, but out of the way. And so think about autonomous tasks. You have a bug. You're late at night. You're the software development manager in a large enterprise. And suddenly you realize that there is a problem somewhere. And the site reliability engineer or SRE has figured out that there is a particular project file mm. which has a particular code base or code file. And in that code, there's a particular functional class which has a particular bug. Now, in that case, you don't have to open anything. The agent sort of identifies it and you can assign it to Kiro and Kiro will take care of it from end to end. You don't have to do it on the fly or open your laptop. You can do it out of Slack or Teams. 
And so the advantage of that is that think of this now increasingly, it's not assistant anymore. Kiro is now, a it's a participant, it's a friend, it's a peer. So we have just promoted an assistant to a peer and it can take care of a lot of those tasks right out of Slack. That's How one example. Okay, let me follow up with that. How do you build a level of trust between the human that's basically trusting this agent, this new team member, mm -hmm. to actually do it right? Like, is there, is there a, how does it do it? Will it suggest or will it actually implement this? What it will do is, again, just like any two humans are interfacing, they're having a conversation. So Kiro will have a conversation with you. Let's start this as an example. Hey, I have found this problem. We have identified the issue, and I think this is how I'm going to solve it. This is the particular specific piece of okay. code that I'm going to introduce, and this is the logic behind me doing this. Now, as an SDM, I'm going to vet it, right? I'm probably not going to push it in the production just yet, and we'll get there next year when Rory again or I again present to you. <laughs> but we're still below before that. But once you have that logic, remember, Today, we are not in that space where you can unleash an autonomous agent. Developers are still in control of what they do best, which is decision-making, oversight, and validation. So about validation, what you're telling me is the developer still has to validate. Is there a way, or is there a world, or are you thinking of methods where maybe there's a second opinion from another that will validate what the first one is proposing? Again, to reduce what the developer's trust level is or do you feel like no you still need to validate so there is always this whole argument around ai validating ai there's a judge LLM, sure. and all of that i think we are at a place where automated reasoning can take that over in kiro we recently introduced property based tests mm -hmm. so it's unlike unit tests these are logical tests based out of reasoning okay and so a little bit of that technology will start showing up in kiro autonomous agent so it's doing some logical tests and giving you, hey, I have done all the logical tests. It's performing the way it's supposed to perform. And so you see from one side, you have the spec-based development and the other is test-driven development. And once you bring that and bring it under the fabric of automated reasoning, interesting certain. things happen. Is it completely going to be flawless? No, it's no, never going to be. neither is human. 100%. I agree. Okay, that was one of the things yes. that you, okay, what's another one? The second one, I have a small role to play there as well as Kiro Power. Now in that, now with developer, now you have given them souped up context that gives them very targeted A, advice and then very targeted workflows. So now it's becoming more personal. And so I think that this is a great opportunity for developer to try it out, but more importantly, it is a great opportunity for us to go out and partner with all these other great ISVs and build very specific curated experiences for them out of an ID. That has never been done before. Expand a little bit more on that. Give, give me a, a more practical example of that. So for example, Agent Core, let's pick that as an example, right? Today, Agent Core, we launched Strands SDK to simplify the experience or lines of code and how to build an agent on, and deploy it on Agent Core. Okay. Now, if you think about that, that's low fidelity, right? It's easy to say two lines of code and an agent will come up, but like sure. there is a lot of what am I building, what use case am I building and so on and so forth. So now bring that Kiro power of Agent Core inside Kiro. Okay. Now, at that point in time, as a developer, if I'm coding a particular use case, for example, I created a personal financial assistant agent. Now, in that, Kiro knows what my destination target is at that point. It has already identified what primitives it's going to use. As a developer, I can literally, without talking to anybody, say, hey, help me make those design choices. Should I use Langfuse or native agent core observability? Should I use Crew AI? Should I think about Langchain? How should I think about, should I use native observability or use my Datadog or any other observability tool? So at that point in time, the developer, believe it or not, is making all these design considerations very early in the process. And so Kiro powers bring all of that context super early. And that context enriches the development. Mm -hmm. So the, problem, the code that is written is high fidelity. All the testing and the automated reasoning works out more. It's more profound and more targeted. And the third thing is you're actually saving a lot of rework that will happen over and over again if you haven't decided on the target. And so if you have decided on the target and there is a power in there, then imagine the recommendation and the speed and velocity of building that agent. Now I'm painting a picture for a financial agent that I built for myself and my kids last week, but a few, right? Like manufacturing will build agents that have MCP tools or hardware attached to it. 
right? And they are sort of those agents. Financial industry will have their own use cases. Retail and advertising will have their own use cases. So purpose built. Purpose built, right? And the problem is you will have companies like AWS build autonomous frontier agents that will be high fidelity and will serve everything. But at the end of the day, they will not solve every problem. Sure. And so we anticipate that customers will build their own agents that will be very specific to their systems. And then our agents or third party agents and their agents will collectively become an agentic system. Okay, so that's Kira. Yes. What else? Outside of Kiro. So let's talk about development, right? We fundamentally believe that when we launched Agent Core, we solved the problem of agent development end to end. So think Kiro, where the journey starts, gets into strands SDK. And then ultimately the host, if you think, think about traditional SDLCs, the stage where it, you operate and deploy is where Agent Core is. It's very platformic in nature and it's very extensible. So you can bring your own model, bring your own primitive or use ours. Choice is yours and we give that flexibility. Two things that are very important for us when it comes to agent core or agent development and lifecycle management are policy and evaluation. Okay. What kind of policy inform, enforcements do you want to or have to do for your agent? You can't unleash an agent out in the wild. You need to establish some Perfect. ground rules. With Bedrock, we call them guardrails. With agent core, it's more about policy management. So that primitive is going to get announced and or just got announced. And so that is an interesting one because it now suddenly for enterprises it became very real rather than somebody's play tool with policy enforcement now this is production grade so i think that's a big step move the other thing that i get excited about within agent code world is this whole notion of evaluation because if at the end of the day an agent is a construct of software development but let's not forget it's also a construct of data and whenever there is data science there is evaluation sure. as you're building that agent and you're in the kiro world and you want to test out the evaluation parts you run that evaluation service or primitive and so you can literally evaluate a b test how your agent is going to behave but then once it's in i think that is another small step but a material step in making sure that our customers are able to build and maintain and deploy production grade agents. You know, I, I could talk to you for hours, so I, I, I know I'm, I'm out of time, but I'm going to sneak in two more questions. Sure. So how is what AWS is doing differentiated? And I'm not going to name competitors, but I'm just going to say, why is what you're doing different from the competitors? So at AWS, we are not competitor obsessed. So we know what they're doing, but we're not really catching up or comparing ourselves against them. I really like that answer. Yeah, I mean, you could even stop and, here. And how we address that is, we are our own internal competition and we are guided by the signals we our own internal developers or our customers give us. Okay. So in a way, directly, we are not competitor obsessed, but the idea is if you are smart enough and you're good enough and you are in the business of inventing, then you don't need to be competitor obsessed. Basically, the idea is we are looking at our customers and our own sort of internal user base. For example, we did a massive rehash of Bedrock. Guess what did it? QCLI. It was built by QCLI. Okay. And so the idea is we are eating our own dog food, we are experimenting with it, but then there's a lot of end user persona empathy that drives that innovation. A classic example is that autonomous agent where I don't want to work on a boring ticket. So let's figure out what kind of autonomous asynchronous agent can solve that problem for me. And so that's the Kiro autonomous agent. For example, within AWS and top enterprise customers talk about, hey, you did a lot for developers. What about DevOps and operators? We want innovation there as well. We want us to reduce the mean time to resolution or mean time to detect. I want a topology graph. I want to understand if agent, an agentic way of, is there a policy drift in, in my environment or is there a state drift? How do you tell me that from an agentic point of view? And so we are going to announce an agent which is specifically focused on cloud operations and DevOps. And okay. so it's a lot of our innovation and ideas are coming from real world examples and needs. This will be a reInvent this year? We will announce it this year. This year, as in this week. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, what it, specifically from a cloud operations perspective. So think of the SRE persona. You did it yourself, you brought it up. <laughs> I know. So think of the SRE persona, right? You're sitting in a room and you have a, a late night ticket, something's not working, or your finance organization just called and said, hey, what's happening? Your billing in the last 48 hours have gone up, right? 
Typically, what would happen is there is a Jira ticket or some kind of a ticket, and somebody is responding at the best humanity did in terms of automation is now that ticket shows up in Slack. And nothing is more irritating than a ticket in Slack with no context. <laughs> the idea is that this AI companion or partner, think of it like Ed, you have created it just like you would create an instance of EC2. You have configured it, you have connected it to all the tools just like you would connect your developer or your cloud operations expert or your SRE. And so now it has all the notion of status exactly. tracking all the changes, right? It has all the identity and policy guardrails that you would define for a human. And so now it has access to the system and the state and it is now sensing what changed. And so something changed, it would automatically trigger that, hey, something has changed, but that was yesterday's technology. Not only will it find out what has changed, it will go and identify the root cause and then say, hey, I did that analysis, which normally people will tell you would take days. Now it is down to minutes. Once you do that, nobody wants to do a deep dive on sure. this kind of a thing. It's irritating and painful. And so now it has done that. It will inform you that this is it has found, and this is the possible solution. And it hands it over to Kilo Autonomous Agent to solve it for you. Increasingly, notice I will come back to this. We are, we are moving beyond the bolt-on AI era which I call the, we are increasingly getting into that world of AI-driven development and AI-driven operations. The next state is essentially AI-managed. Increasingly, human role is not still in the loop, will continue to remain in the loop, but I call it get out of the way. Get out of the way. If Jarvis is there, let Jarvis walk. Don't come in the way. How much of what you guys are doing is driven by feedback, for example, from Amazon.com? from the developers around at Amazon.com to this huge business there, right, that touches pretty much every aspect. You're a logistics business, you're a retail business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So are the signals, is, is a large part of them coming from Amazon.com? Signals are coming from everywhere. Sure. And we like to think of Amazon.com as, as one, one of our of... largest customer. That's fair. Right? And so it's not that if Amazon.com says something, it is higher priority than our top customer outside. We treat them as equal and equally important. But yes, we have that user base and they're close by. So we listen to their feedback and it's kind of interesting because innovation can come from anywhere and the best idea can come in, can come in from any problem that anybody sees. And so from that logic, Amazon.com is a great customer. That's a great answer. I love that you're focusing on, on cloud ops, on the operations side of things, not on developers. Oftentimes when, you know, when we're talking about AI, it's all about developers, developers, developers. Yeah. And sometimes the folks that are also running this need this, these capabilities. I'm glad that uh, there's a good focus of that. I know you're going to have a busy day, a busy week, so I won't take too much of your time. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you very much, Alec. Absolutely. We'll have to do this again on a longer podcast outside of reInvent. <laughs>